you guys. Good to hear yeah, you too. You thanks thanks for joining us. Yeah, that's uh, that's an honor to be in your program, man. Thank you for inviting me. You. You're welcome. No, you're, 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 you're welcome. welcome. We're honored to have you. I'm Javier, Absolutely. also known as the Grasshopper. I am mm -hmm. Kendrick. I am the bear. <laughs> oh, you're the bear. <laughs> I'm the bear. <laughs> And uh, we're really good friends, and we started this uh, YouTube channel together to profile uh, legends of uh, the combat sports and just anyone inspirational that inspires us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, thank you, thank oh, you, thank you. You're absolutely. Welcome. I have um, Il Ilanka. I have some questions for you, and and whatever you and if you want to ask us questions at any time, it's totally fine. So you're a, a seven-time Muay Thai champion in the flyweight. Is that correct? World champion, yes. World Let's champion, seven-time world yeah. champion, Muay Thai rules in the flyweight division, correct? Definitely, yes. That is amazing. You've had an incredible <laughs> career. Yes. Thank you, thank you. And I really enjoyed yeah. my career, so. Mm. It's yeah, bad. I am. Um, it's too bad you have, it's, it's only just for a certain time if you're in your life. Yeah, yeah. I wish it could go on for, for, for a long, much longer, right? Mm -hmm. So, so Ilanka, I am. Um, I don't have anyone to talk about besides my one of my coaches, uh, Edge Brown, who was a professional kickboxer back mm -hmm. in the day too, and champion, world champion actually in kickboxing rules. Um, he trained with Master Toddy, and Ma and um, yeah. I have no one else to talk about Dutch kickboxing with. Period. Um, I'm a mm -hmm. big fan for the last 15, 20 years. When I was, uh, I remember when Rob Kamen came here to help us yeah. train at. Um, uh, Jake Shields and Gilbert Melendez gym in San Francisco, where I was, I was training and, and fighting out of there. Rob came and taught us some seminar and then he came back and just started running practices for a few weeks. And mm -hmm. uh, they were all asking me, do you know who this guy is Javier? Cause I was known as the striker of the MMA team. And I said, okay. yeah, he's the best ever. He's a freaking legend in striking. Like, yeah, must be pretty good. This is in 2007. And I was like, no yeah. one knows, you know, I've been studying uh, the greats um, for a long time. Um, I was watching your fights and uh, you have a wonderful combination with the boxing, mixing with the knees and, yep. and the clinch and the elbows. Mm -hmm. Great kicks too, but you have Thanks. wonderful boxing hands mixed with the knees. You like the knee and your knee yeah. style reminds me a lot of Ivan Hipotle and um, Ernesto Hoost and Rob Kamen. I've seen them demonstrate uh, the similar, just a similar Dutch uh, knee style. Same thing style as can, yeah. Say that yeah. again? But yeah, Tyrone and I and uh, Rob Kamen in the past uh, were um, trainees or students of Lucian Carbon, and that was my trainer. And mm. he had his way in throwing the knees because you have several ways in throwing a knee and in, uh, in placing a knee technique. And and that you can see it in the students of Lucian Carbon, such as Rob Kamen, Tyrone Spong, I did, Gilbert, Gilbert Eiffel. They have a different way of in throwing the knees in. And uh, and that's where you can see that the the Dutch style, uh, Thai boxing in your in your case, kick boxing your strong style. Yeah, it's like a double. It's like a double head grab and then step through with the knee almost, right? It, yeah, that you guys used, do a lot. Yeah, what we used we what we used to do is to to throw in the hip all the way in and use all the weight and 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 to use the momentum as well. So that's uh, true to practice. Then you get the experience, and then you know when it's when it's time to throw such technique. Yeah, D Dutch style kickboxing. It's the most. It was ahead of its time. I feel like I just feel like mm -hmm. the Netherlands is ahead of their time when it comes to striking. Yeah. It's so well developed and efficient. Um, and uh, it's where where does can you, do you can you tell me about the history a little bit of, of, of Dutch kickboxing and, and Lucian Carbon because I know there's a deep deep history there and how did they get yeah. so freaking good how did they get so good at striking <laughs> they're the best okay yeah definitely i think so too um the dutch are known for the dutch people in in general are known as persistent people um if you if you check out the the correct characteristics um if you go back in time then you see that um johan Vos and andre um jan plas were the two uh, founders of the the kickboxing in the Netherlands, and no my trainer, yeah, yes, and my train trainer Lucian Carbin trained at um, Majiro Gym back then, and that's where Fred Fred Royers and uh, other legends came from, 
And they were the founders of the Dutch kickboxing and the Dutch Muay Thai. And Muay Thai, the, the knees, the, the kickboxing, that's only the boxing with the, and the kicks, were allowed back then. But then I guess one time they invited, uh, I guess it was Tom Haring, he invited uh, Thai people over. And the Dutch weren't, uh, weren't known for, they, they didn't know about clinching. So uh, there were the Thais, they were throwing the Dutch all around the, uh, oh, all around the ring. Yeah, so that's where my trainer, Lucian Kerbin, went to Sijotong, that's in Pattaya, and to train with Yotong Senanan. Mm. And that's oh, where he saw that the, the elbow strikes and the knee strikes were the, were the strongest. Everybody thought it was the punching and, um, and the kicking, and they came all those other fighters, such as, um, let me think, Fred Royes, Jan Plas, all those old legends. They came from Kyokushinkai. That's the 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 mm. the, 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 the strong fight that the, the karate style, but the stronger mm. version. And they did Kyokushinkai. So they were known to kicks to the body and punches, but not to the to the legs. And that's where that, that, that's a big history because the Dutch were traveling a lot. And mm. when my trainer went to um, to train with uh, Yotang, Yot, Yotong Senanan, that's uh, it's the camp Si Yotong in in Pattaya, that's where he. Uh, came to know the clinching and that's where he developed it he brought the techniques back to the to the netherlands and for years i guess maybe for the last 20, 30 30 years my camp from lucian Carbin is the the camp in the netherlands where the strongest and the best clinching technique strikes came from hmm. come from okay. yeah when, when i wa when i watch your style um ilanka mm -hmm. um when i watch when, i'm gonna say your name correct ilanka is that correct yeah, you say correctly yeah. yes Okay, uh, good. When when I watch your your fights, I notice yeah. you. It's exactly what you just said. The history makes total sense because yeah. your style, your stance is very. Uh, it's almost like a traditional Muay Thai stance, almost. Yeah. But then you yeah. mix in the Dutch style combinations with a exactly. good clinch, elbow, and knees. So it's like you have the best of both worlds. And I've seen other That's Dutch fighters. They don't mix it that well. Yeah. But Lucian style, I guess, is. M more the traditional most Muay Thai neck clinch, neck, neck clinch with the Dutch combos. Yeah, and, and what we said also is that um, the Thai people and the Asian people don't like to move around. You see, when they fight, they, they only stay on one pace, but they move, but they, they, don't, they don't use the full, the full potential of the ring. And that's where we came in. And that's where we said, well, normal fighter, when he, he, he learns to fight, you're going to stand with your left in front and then to, to punch in um, strong with the right. But we were we, we were training both ways, so also the southpaw right in front and 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 from every every angle that you're coming from, you 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 need to punch, kick, knee or elbow. So that's our our um, envision in fighting, and that's where how my trainer developed everything. He said uh, every technique. I think my trainer evolved uh, through the last thirty years in mm -hmm. in in uh, Kyokushinkai and then goes to boxing and then combination from boxing to kickboxing and then Thai boxing and yeah. he created his own yeah he created his own style he was also um the first Dutch world champion the Netherlands had in, mm. in Thai boxing I think he was wow. that for maybe 15 years long in a row mm. Re really crazy damn mm. okay. yeah nice nice Ilanka how old were you when you first started your your um your training and what made you start? Well, at first, uh, when I started training, um, I'm, I'm always a fighter that loves to work hard. Okay. I enjoy, I, I, I enjoy the work. And, sure. and I really, I appreciate it. And, at that, and to work hard is for me very addictive. So, okay. and I like to grow, I like to get better. So that's, I, I, wake, I wake up with this. Um, I train three times a day for six days a week. Like nice. always, when mm. I had a fight, maybe the day after the fight, I didn't train, but the day okay. after the second day or the third day after I'm back in the gym working, always okay. working, but sure. make me start. Well, it's kind of a strange story because I started late. I okay. had a dog and um, <laughs> I was sharing a terrace with, with a friend, with a, with a neighbor and I didn't know the neighbor and okay. my dog, he ran into somebody's apartment. And mm. I wanted to have my dog back. Sure. So I, 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 that's where I met my neighbor for the first time. And okay. my neighbor was Jerry Morris, multiple okay. world cha champion in kickboxing. Wow. I didn't know. 
Yeah. Oh. I, I gotta I look him up. I've never seen the guy. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Norris. Norris. Jerry Morris. Yeah. Mm, Jerry Morris. And, uh, yeah, and he was about, I think, 15, 16 times world champion in the, and also student of Lucian's. Mm. And I didn't know no. the guy. Never heard about this guy. Okay. okay. So he told me I should come and train where he trains because he saw I had yeah, some aggression. I was a, a explosive personality. I am, still am. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you really need to visit the gym. <laughs> so that's what happened. Okay. And, uh, back then I was uh, 22, 20, okay. 21, 22. And he brought me to the gym okay. where Lucian uh, was giving classes. And the first time I went into the class, Lucian picked me out. And then he said, well, I can make you a champion within a year. And I said, this guy should be crazy. He, he must be crazy. And so, and then the next day I came to him, I said, well, what does it take to be a champion? And then he said, um, I remember that it was really bad. He said, I'm the mouth and you're the ears. That means you're going to do what I'm going to say. And that's right. what, that, that's how it started. Sure. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's like uh, Karate Kid yeah. 1, the movie, Mr. Miyagi. He made it. Miyagi. He's like, I say, <laughs> you do. No question. <laughs> no question. I guess maybe my trainer had, had it from Mr. Miyagi, but here I had my own Mr. Miyagi. And okay. that's where we started. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Where we started. Wow. Mm. 23. Pretty I good. never did any any sports, but I was so determined in becoming a champ. And uh, I guess in eight months from that, that point, I was Dutch champion fighting in uh, the biggest arena in the Netherlands. Mm. Wow. Wow. I guess while, while we're talking about that, so what... What would you say was your most memorable fight? Uh, my first world title fight. Okay. And um, because that's always the, the most special one. Sure. Um, and I, okay. fought, I fought again a Thai girl. So there was a delegation from Thailand um, that came to the Netherlands with a belt and I guess 16 or 17 generals in suit. Mm. And, yeah. uh, no pressure, yeah. no pressure, right? <laughs> totally no pressure. <laughs> I was so convinced and relaxed, but then, uh, then, then the fight started. And oh, the fact that there was so, such a crazy time back then, because I wore glasses, and every time that when I had a fight, I lost my lenses, my contacts. So between the rounds, we were searching for those soft contact lenses. And in one of the rounds, I said to Sense, "Then you see my my trainer put in the lenses back into my eye, and I said, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, when I when I win this fight." I'm gonna do me some a laser surgery. Laser the eye. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Wow. And I won the fight, so that was one of my most memorable fights. Yeah. Mm, mm. Wow. Blanca, wow. um, can, while while we're talking about that fight, Kendrick, um, mm -hmm. what happened? I watched the 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 war with the Japanese woman. What happened there? I thought you won that fight. It was a versus the oh, Japanese means, woman. You met that one in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. It was like a oh. battle. I thought you won that one. I don't get it. Yeah. I thought but we had a strategy. You know, the day before, um, I had some food poison. So the doctor, he said, I cannot fight. So I said, I traveled all the way from the Netherlands to fight. So tomorrow I'm going to fight. So I had some stomach problems. And mm. then my trainer said, we're going to do, do, do this either way. We're going for the win. And um, I, I guess the second round, um, I, I said, my, I told to my trainer that I don't have energy anymore. So I needed to give her a round away. So, you know, when you fight five rounds, you work with counting rounds, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess I gave the third round away to get, to get energy. The fourth, I got back and it was equal. It's like a draw for the round. Mm -hmm. And the fifth, I took back with the elbows. So it was definitely a win. But I guess um, they wanted me to lose. I, mm -hmm. I felt like they wanted you to lose. And also... Mm -hmm just from my experience when I watch fights and stuff, and I don't know you, but it's funny, you, it's, mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. I knew something possibly could be wrong with you because I watched some of your yeah. other fights. I knew that there might be something going on, sick, something, you know what I mean? Like you didn't feel well. Yeah. I could tell by the way you were fighting. Definitely. Yeah, I was sick, I was sick, but we didn't want to cancel the fight. We really didn't sure. want to do that. So, um, and, and I'm, I, I have the reputation is when I fight, um, then I go all the way. And even if I'm sick or not, the only time when I won't fight is when the doctor really puts it off. He said, you cannot fight. But I, I, I thought I needed to do this. 
And she just kept pressing the whole time. She was just press, press you nonstop. Yeah. Just, she would not stop. That was a war. Yeah. That was a war. Definitely, definitely. Um, I guess the, the Japanese fire. Oh my God, my God. You get, can you give me a second? I want to get my sure. son to, to of course. get the dog. <laughs> my God. Jaden, Jaden, have a cake with the Medi Hontis for Storm at the end of the interview. I should leave. My son. Oh my God. <laughs> so these are the X factors that we have in life, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many dogs do you have, Il Ilanka? How many dogs do you have? I have I have four dogs, two German Shepherds and a Border Collie and uh, and a, a, a Frisian um, Stabby Hound. Wow. Well, you got a lot to talk about. You got yeah, dogs oh too, Kendrick. God. Yeah, I got, I have yeah. two dogs. I, I have a Rottweiler and I have a Kane Corso Yellow Lab mix. Oh, wow. I like those mm -hmm. dogs, man. I really yeah. like those dogs. Yeah. But let's get back to, to I couldn't, I couldn't keep my concentration. <laughs> it's okay. Sure, sure. <laughs> Ilanka, um, yeah. Oh, we, you and I, uh, so you're September 11th, your birthday, right? I'm September yeah. 10th. Oh, man. That's always, always a good combination. September people, mm -hmm. man. Oh. Mm -hmm. they, they always click. They always click. You see, my trainer is the seventh. Tyrone is oh. the, the fourth. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. That, yeah. yeah, very interesting. I wanted to ask you about um, Lucian. I watched uh, a lot of your rounds of pad work with him and also with uh, Tyrone Spong, but I've watched a lot of yours. He's, mm -hmm. I don't understand Dutch, um, but it seems like he's so particular and precise on what he wants out of the pad work and um he makes you do a lot of reps and i see him like mm -hmm. it's he wants it perfect of what he's looking for the, the the cadency the rhythm of the strike when it happens and it just seems like it's so hard and and and, and at high level and um and you when you're training you're doing the pad work so long you're doing everything long. he says you're keeping up but, and you also, I noticed when you're training, you look like you have a, the biggest smile on your face and you're doing the hardest <laughs> training. You look like someone that really enjoyed what she was doing, like really enjoyed. You look so happy and you're being tortured with the pad work. Yeah, well, you know, Lucian is, is unique in his, in, his, in his own kind. What Lucian does on the pads, I haven't seen anyone else do in the Muay Thai scenery. It's really crazy what he does. Yeah, he's really, really crazy. And... My, I guess my luck was that I was a grass, I was nobody when I came to Lucian and he, he, how do you say it? He, he, he polished me the way he wanted me to, to, to be. So the thing is with Lucian is that when he sees a fighter, the way you come and you walk into his gym, he knows what kind of fighter you are, what kind of striker you are. Are you the striker that likes to kick or the striker that likes to punch or are you attacker or you defender? From that moment that he already analyzed you in, in a few seconds, You're and an he already knows, yeah, I'm an attacker. But but because I was an attacker, um, we said we wanted to work extra hard on the defense. I know that mm. the fighting offensive is the best defense, but we wanted to work on the footwork backwards, and that was a hard part because yeah, a lot of fighters hard. are fight. Yeah, but it's if, if you can uh, if you can manage to do that, man, then it's heaven then it, it doesn't matter on what, what way you're standing, if you're putting left front or you're, you're walking two steps behind or you're going back with your, your right leg uh, first, everything. But um, yeah, the, Lucian, Lucian is crazy. And uh, we were so balanced together because if you understand his vision and the way he wants the pad work to be done, um, you grow into it and it's and it's really easy it's about breathing it's about listening he, he, he talks in, in 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 sessions like i want you to do a combination and it has to be pam 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 then you know how to control the breathing with coming in with a combination with the punch kicks and the knees so yes. lucian is really crazy he works on different levels so i see you understand what I, i'm saying i i understand um i i'm a big fan of um all different styles of pad work um, I know that sparring and being in shape and having the drills with your partner is the most important for fighting, but the pad work yeah. is an incredible tool. And it also brings, whether people realize it or not, it brings all kinds of people to the sport that, that want to try it because it looks cool and it's a killer workout. Yeah. Um, there's a yeah. big 
trends right now with pad work and boxing and kickboxing. And, um, but he's like yeah. you said, Anonka, he's next, he's next level and next level, next level. When I watch his pad work, but I, I only have like 20 minutes or 15 minutes at most to watch his videos. I've been studying him yeah. for years, but I need like a two weeks off to really sit in my room and not leave and fi- try to figure out exactly everything he's doing. And I won't even get half of it, but I have to really yeah. study him to get it. You know what I mean? But I love pad work and, um, and I listen really good. So when people are directing me, so I, I'm studying, it's, it's so hard though. His stuff is next, next, next level. Yeah. And you know, the thing with Lucian sometimes, and the way, when you're talking like this, then I, I really know what you're saying because sometimes you're throwing a punch or a knee and then he says, you need to put in a little more hip or a little more knee. Just put your, your foot like two inches to the left or two inches to the right. And, and those little small details make a big difference in how to throw a punch or a kick and make momentum as well so that you have the right impact, the right, the right impact on the strike. So that, that's, a, that's another level in thinking and in putting out a fight strategy, knowing that um, you have to listen to the breathing of your opponent when to put in the gear. Like when you when you want to when when you put in the gear in like we talking gears right in in the Netherlands for the first gear that's taking it slow it's like driving a car you mm-hmm. know and that's how how we um, how we talk to each other so then if you listen cl- close ca- closely closely to the breathing of your opponent then you know when to put in the gear or then you know when to put put in the hardest punch it could be the second or it could be the third or the fourth or just play with your with your food like we say. Okay. Yeah. The bear must understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, would you say the Lucian? Would you say the Lucian is the most has been the most influential in terms of your kickboxing training and your development overall, your career in that? Or who? Or, or who would you say was the most? Or is what's the most influential? I think he is because okay. we had a very a very close connection, and it's still important in my life, even though. Sure. Um, I'm now in South America and he is mm-hmm. now in, in Amsterdam, still in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. speak to each other about weekly or sometimes daily. We, we mm-hmm. still have a close connection. And uh, the way he, he worked with me is not only on, uh, on, on the pets and in the sparring, but he also worked on the mental part. Nowadays, you see, nowadays you see that um, fighters are talking more about the mental part and the, me- the mental support they, sh- they should be getting because that's mm-hmm. a trend right now. But back then, mm-hmm. it's preparing, go and fight. But, mm-hmm. but Lucian thought differently. Mm-hmm. He was ahead of his time. You, yeah, yeah, I remember you saying that, definitely. Are you the only member in your family that did martial arts training or um, did competitive training, combat training in that sense, combat sports? In my direct family, yes. But I have okay. also nephews, um, Dex and Guillaume Elmont, and uh, mm-hmm. they are Olympians in judo. Wow. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! And, and I have two half brothers. Okay. Um, one half brother, he was um, a professional basketball player in the Netherlands. Okay. So they are no. like, I'm the shortest one, but the most aggressive one, and they are the tallest one and the very easygoing. <laughs> Is, <laughs> easygoing it? <laughs> Is it safe to say that you set that that you set the standard and set the trend doing the amazing things that you did in terms of? The influence that you had on your nephews and wanting to do what they now do and, and um your your half brother are you are you older than what your half brother is or is he the older, older yeah no i'm the oldest okay no, so older. okay so are, are you would you say that you set that you set the standard in the stage for for greatness in the family with that then i don't dare to say it but i guess so <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> but you're aggressive so yeah dare to say <laughs> yeah all right I'm yeah aggressive. that's yeah, a good true, thing true. wow yeah nice, I, nice. I, I, that's amazing yeah um does your son train martial arts yeah he he trains martial arts because i say so mm, um, okay. <laughs> but he's a soccer player he likes to play soccer but sure. i think he's a boy and boys will get into trouble and sure. uh he, and, and I think it's for him really important to defend himself. And mm-hmm. that's why I said there are two things in life that, that's not up for discussion. That is school and sports. And those two things, that is something that you have to do. Sure, sure. Okay. That's the yes, same, with my, same with my kids, Alanka. Um, they're, 
people admire their skills, you know, on the pads with yes, me, my daughter, yes, my two sons, yes, but they yes. don't know that they're kind of forced, you know what I mean? Until they're 18, then they can do what they want. I force them. They have to train with me yeah. or with someone else. And that's it. And, and school, like you said, and school. Um, mm-hmm. How important, Ilanka, is it for women in particular? I have a daughter, she's 16, to be able to defend yourself, especially in these all the time, but in these crazy times, women are, mm-hmm. women are constantly attacked. Um, h- have you ever had to use uh, your martial arts training to defend yourself in a real situation? And if you haven't, how important is women's self-defense? I know it's very important, but how important, what's your take on women's self-defense? How important is it? I think it's very important uh, for women to do so, to, to take on self-defense. Before I was a fighter, a professional fighter, I, I came into contact with, with se- on several occasions that I had to defend myself. And, you know, if you grew up in Amsterdam in the streets, yeah, then you really need to defend. And it doesn't matter if you're fighting a man or a woman, you have to fight. And um, so it's in the moment that I became a professional fighter, that's what I saw the educational value of practicing a combat sport. And that's where I say it's for women so important to, to practice self-defense because they get more discipline, they get uh, more self-esteem, more, self, more, more feeling for self-worth, and uh, they get confident. And, uh, and the, mo- the moment that you feel confident and that you're you, then your air and the, your attitude will show and that's where people will step back. Or for the people who didn't step back, well, then they get a punch or a kick. Easy. Mm. They should, mm. it is very important. That's why my son, my son was six years old. Even, even if he's a boy or a girl, if, it, if it's a boy or a girl, they should take on a self-defense class. Yes, absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. What, yeah. Um, do you have people that, like for an example, being a martial artist, being a champion, do you do you have martial artists that you that inspired you? You know, by the example that they set, be it Bruce Lee, Cynthia Rothrock. I mean, just different <laughs> across the board martial artists that you've seen maybe when you were first starting that kind of encouraged yeah. you to want to push harder. Who yeah, are? yeah, I had a lot. The first one was right in my camp. That guy was so amazing. That was Gilbert nice. Eiffel. Gilbert Eiffel. Yeah. Oh my mm. God. He was he my was hero. killer. Okay. Yeah. Killer. And I was killer. training with the killer. And I remember saw when he, up to... Remember when he head kicked Big Daddy Gary Goodridge and Pride with the head kick? I was there. You were I there? Wow. There. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. And, and you know, when, when I saw that, you know, I was like, I gotta keep working on my head kick. I gotta keep working on it. <laughs> you know, you know, that technique, what he had done in Pride 16 was that we were standing in the elevator. We had a press conference the day before. And uh, the way Gary, that's what I told you before. Gary walked up to the, the weight scale and that's when Lucian said, I know what he, how he has to open his fight. And the way he, daddy approached Gilbert, then Lucian said, you have to start right in front and then you have to kick from the back left to the head. That's what, and, it was, and we discussed that in the elevator to the hotel room and the next day, that's how we started with, uh, with the kick and it's only one strike. That was really, wow. really amazing. Gilbert, Gilbert was like, he was the, the number one striker back then in the world. So the my best. first, my first, the one, the one, the one and only. He was half of the one and only for me then. Eh? And, mm-hmm. uh, and Gilbert was number one. And then I was watching Muay Thai a lot. And I was looking up to um, Samart Payakarun from the Sujatong camp. One of my favorites in history is Samart. Yeah, so much. I and watched I trained with him. all his videos. You did? So did wow. my coach, uh, Edge Brown. He got to train with him in Thailand. He says uh, Samart whooped his ass in sparring. Yeah, he whooped everybody's ass. <laughs> 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 everybody, yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. They say he's the best at one of. They say some people say he's the best boy type fight ever, Kendrick, and that's saying a lot. Some people say wow. he's the best ever. Yeah, yeah. With the teeth, number one. With the push kick, number one. And I trained with the number two also. That's Nangpishi. And wow. we're still friends. We're still friends. As from mm-hmm. 1995, 1996. Wow. Then, uh, so these guys were my favorite because Samad was in Thailand really, really popular. And, sure. um, and, and another one that, that I really admired was Diesel Noy because of the, knees, Noy. the, the way Diesel Noy was throwing it's the clinch. knees. Wow. And his knees. Yeah. yeah. Deadly. Oh my God. Deadly. You got to train with them. You're so lucky. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, that was <laughs> that was because my trainer he said if you're going to Thailand, you only can go to one place, and it's, and that was Sichuan. And yeah, and we went to Sichuan because Sichuan was not a commercial camp; it was a camp that was really for Thai people. And um, Lucian arranged that with Yotong because back in the eighties, Lucian trained there also. So they had he was Sichuan, the Netherlands in Amsterdam. So Lucian's original fighting name before fighting factor carbon carbon was Sichuan Amsterdam. That's mm -hmm. that's why on all my shorts in my in the beginning of my career I had Sichuan on my uh, on my uh, on my shorts. Represent. Mm, Kendrick, okay. there's yeah. Kendrick, there's a legend in kickboxing. There's many legends. One of the legends who's still alive is Rob Kamen, okay? Yeah. Um I got to, he was like, to me, he was Michael Jackson. I'm not kidding. I'd rather meet him than Michael <laughs> Jackson, okay? He came to the no. Bay Area. I took his seminar. He didn't know how much of a fan I was of him, obviously. But sure. but guess, because it was all MMA fighters in the sem seminar, I was an MMA mm -hmm. fighter too, but I had a striking background. Um, so guess who he wanted to use for the whole seminar, for the demonstration? Me. me. <laughs> and nice. when I stepped out of the room, he went looking for me to bring me back, like... That's stuff I'll never forget. So anyways, my I point, is, and then I got to work with him again after that. And wow. um, when he was training us uh, at, at another time, it's just unreal. And so my point is, Kendrick, this man, he punched me, he kicked me. It's the hardest I think I've ever been hit in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wasn't even going full power. He's just demonstrating. And it's like full power. The impact. The yeah. impact it's scary, bro. It's like legit. His low kick, Kendrick, his hook, his left. Yeah. It's just. I'm telling you, bro, it's a big man. He's retired. He's fat, but he's still fast, quick. But the I way he swings, the left hook, right low kick is deadly. Left still. hook, right low kick, Kendrick. If you felt this, you'd be like, dude, this dude will kill me with one punch. <laughs> and we were talking, me and uh, Rob came and I was trying not to be weird, you know, but I just kept asking him stuff and talking to him. He's like leaving the gym. I'm like in the parking lot talking to him. Definitely. I, I really joined you with this. Wow. And I, you, we, you, we, you. Ilanka, two things. Two things. What are you most passionate about? That's one. And then the other thing I want you to do is tell me about the, the Alanka Elmont Foundation. And that might uh, be the answer to the question. <laughs> well, <laughs> what are you most passionate? <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, I'm most passionate about getting action, doing things, not sitting around and doing nothing, mm -hmm. doing okay. things, achieving things. Okay. getting results and that's that's a good thing it's also a Absolutely. bad thing because you <laughs> never rest <laughs> well, I, but it, I mean but to look at the life you've lived and the things you've been able to accomplish it's been it's, it's served you more than it's cursed you clearly yeah definitely it does and it's mm -hmm. true but still mm -hmm. sometimes when you when I say I need a break then my mind say no you don't you know, and yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that's 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 the internal battle that I have that I need to okay. let go and sit and do nothing. And okay. uh, but I'm really passionate in achieving things, putting up things, making things to work. If it's with sure. the fights or with other people, I really enjoy okay. It. Okay. being active. Okay. And uh, yeah, and my foundation is uh, another thing. My foundation started when I was in Amsterdam. I'm an honorary okay. citizen of Amsterdam. Okay. And that's because I was doing, while I was fighting a professional athlete, I was doing projects with, um, how do you say it, juvenile, um, juvenile youngsters yep. that mm -hmm. were, yeah, youngsters that were in the street making trouble. And okay. we were getting those guys from the street coming to our gym, being somebody, being a champion, or the same thing with the juveniles. And those projects mm. that I did in the Netherlands, they gave okay. a, lot of, a lot of resistance at first. Mm -hmm. um, but then they saw the, the value of what I was doing. And that's where I get uh, um, honor, honorary recognized. Citizenship. For yeah. the citizenship that I was I got doing. you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how um, my interest in doing good came. Um, okay. And doing other things than fighting. That's how it sure. started. And I'm, I'm born in Suriname, South America, where I am now. But I mm -hmm. was raised in the Netherlands all my life. Mm -hmm. So the Suriname society was also a big part of my life because they, they powered me. They supported me in the times that, that were good and also when I needed people around. And mm -hmm. uh, it's also a thing that you go back to your roots, right? We all Absolutely. Do. Absolutely. So, 
that's where I said I really wanted to give back to my country and okay. uh, discover the country, get to know the country and the people. And mm. that's where I raised a lot of money to do events um, mm. for children in uh, for poor children and children with disabilities and underprivileged mm. children. That's wow. a beautiful thing. Wow, that's a beautiful nice, yeah. nice. You um, yeah. you look amazing. So my 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 other question would be, you you do. I'm telling the truth. You look amazing. Hey. Hey, you never, you never lied, Kendrick. You never lied. You know, so, 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 so my question, my question for you becomes, aside of being blessed with good genetics, what is it that you do to look as good as you do? I mean, are you, are you, how, how often are you still training or exercising? I mean, kickboxing, what, what is it that you're doing? I mean, shoot, tell me about some of that. I mean, just, yeah, what, what is it that you're doing? You know, nutrition too, whatever. Care of yourself. Yes. Too much. <laughs> too I'm much doing stuff. really too much. Over too much. Work. All right. Too much. I, first of all, I'm a full-time mother. That's one thing. Okay, that's, a, sure. that's, a, that's a decision. Okay. But I have a, a company that's called uh, Sport and Performance Services. Okay. And I do change management for gyms that are going down or trying to keep their head up. Um, I am a personal trainer. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with professional okay. fighters. Okay. But also, the last three years, I started to train with um, people that are not into the branch, uh, some, like CEOs, captains, or okay. people who just want to train. It's a different okay. way of, oh, it's a different approach in, that's in my work. a recognitional like, fighter. Yeah, and, that's my clientele. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I work a lot, too. Last ten, last 10 years, yeah. No, I've never worked with a fighter, only like CEOs and people who want to learn yeah. the sport or get in shape, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the last three years what I'm doing now. So I'm okay. my day is busy with about eight, eight to six to eight people a day that okay. uh, that I do pet work with, and I, I do also the mental part in coaching. Okay, and I run the foundation uh, mm -hmm. for my mm -hmm. projects. I do sport days sure. for children with disabilities. Okay. Um, yeah, and I train a bit, not okay. enough. Because I, well, I see, I, I'm getting older, man. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I have a, I have a six pack underneath. <laughs> underneath a <laughs> bit still, of skin. <laughs> nah, Listen, well, young, I mean, yeah, you're still, hey. you got a long way to go. You're still young, Absolutely. still young buck. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. still young buck. You're well, yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, that, uh, that, so. not, I was just going to say, um, I mean, well, that being that you do everything that you do, that, that definitely answers the question, so. The, the moral of the story or the lesson learned is to, if we, we want to look, you know, look good like that, stay busy, keep moving. So it's my takeaway. That's the thing. Yeah, keep moving. Mm -hmm. keep, keep, be, keep start being active, stay active. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ilanka, um, so being, being a professional female fighter, that must be very different than being a male professional fighter. I know that could be a whole yeah. other episode, I'm sure. But um, recently, yeah. Uh, this past year during the pandemic, I've discovered, I've always been a fan of female fighting. I've always been a fan of female martial artists. Most of the martial arts movies uh, ch from China are about female warriors. I always tell people that. Yeah. Um, Crouching Tiger, yeah. Hidden Dragon, Wing Chun. Um, so, uh, and women always bring it. They bring the freaking fight. Watching the UFC, <laughs> the women bring it. You know, they're they have aggression and, um, and technique. Uh, I've, I've re I've discovered some fighters I hadn't heard about. Uh, you being one of them, I I've seen your videos, but I didn't make the connection. And then <laughs> I I researched you a little bit more. And then I was like, oh my god, you know, she's like credible striker, and I never really heard about you on mainstream TV. And so I would follow your stuff on YouTube, and then I saw you in Clubhouse, and and that's how I made the connection. Yeah. And um, and then I I've sparred uh Jermaine Durandamy before when she was training with us in Mountain View in San Jose. And that was a whole yeah. other experience. Oh my God. Um, I'm a big fan of hers. Jermaine Durandamy. Um, she dropped some men during sparring in our gym. It was crazy. <laughs> we were, we were, I was cracking up. Everyone was laughing, but she body shot, <laughs> right cross them, right hook some guys. It was, they went down fighters. It was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Um, so then, uh, and I asked her about her low kick. She broke down the whole thing to me. It was crazy. Um, but anyways, um, I found this woman, Fridia Cheetah Gibbs. She's a, a kickbox first African-American kickboxing world champion um, from like the 90s. And um, Fridia Cheetah Gibbs. And I found her 
and on, on YouTube. And I'm like, how come I never heard about her? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, American champion. She's phenomenal. Great story. She was on our, on our show too. And then I, mm-hmm. and, um, and then I, there's some trailblazers. Like um, I think Kathy Long was a phenomenal fighter. Yeah. Um, I have met her. You've met her. Nice. Yes. Oh, wow. Incredible fighter back, you know, back in the days, incredible fighter um, yourself, obviously I'm a big fan and I'm going to keep you researching you even more now than I already was and I already was and uh, also there's another old school fighter I think she's the first boxing and kickboxing champion at the same time Gracilia Casillas from from here from um, the Bay Area or from from California maybe Southern Cal and she's fighting in the 80s and I found some old footage of her so a lot of with the exception of the UFC and Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate yeah. there's a lot of great female fighters from the past that no one knows about and they were incredible yeah. yourself included yeah Thank you. But that's because um, of the internet. You know, when we, when the, the names you were, were, were talking about just a few uh, minutes ago, they're all names that were before the internet connection and that you had to get it, the, to see the footage on tape, on a VHS or a Betamax or a high eight uh, um, digital camera stuff. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. nowadays, everything is online, on YouTube, on the internet, on daily motion. And um, that's what you see. So, before, when I, when I started fighting, it was really hard uh, to get some fights because it's a man's world, right? Especially the fighting world. And That's to get on a, on a show, to get on a show, you should prove yourself not one time, but maybe eight times before mm-hmm. a promoter says, I really want to place you because you're a good fighter or a striker or you do a deal with two fighters that then you need to get a woman. Because yeah, it's still, it was really very hard for women to get on a card, even I had had those problems in the beginning. But I proved my word and mm-hmm. then in the Netherlands, I became a thing that I was matched up on every event. And while I was fighting, there was no internet or a bit, just a bit internet. And mm-hmm. YouTube, even Facebook didn't e- exist. Nowadays, everybody gets a fight. Everybody's on the internet. Everybody mm-hmm. is on Instagram. and. Sure. And you, you know by some, uh, some crazy fighter that, has, that in real life, it's a YouTuber, you know, that mm-hmm. are the crazy right. thing. And the real, right. real fighters are not really on the internet, the fighters from mm-hmm. back then, the old, the old generation. I guess sure. I'm the old generation now. No, no. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. No, not at all. I don't mind. Not at all. Um, I, 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 got, I have one last it's I'm too question. lazy for the internet. I'm too lazy for the internet. Let I like you, to do things. <laughs> yeah. What? Let, oh my gosh. You are not too lazy for the internet. I have, La- uh, lazy does not belong in a sentence with you. I'm sorry. No, it does not. Yeah, that word and your name, lazy, don't go together. Um, <laughs> Ilan- Ilanka, I have, I have one last question. It's not a question. It's just something I want to share with you uh, that I observed okay. when I was watching uh, one of your uh, documentaries. Um, I sent a bunch to uh, Kendrick. Uh, my my freaking phenomenal co-host uh Kendrick you're the man bro um thank you for that thank you for yeah, that yeah absolutely and uh he he says he messaged me back he says you know these are all in Dutch right and I go yeah they're all in Dutch I go but just, <laughs> just you don't you just watch them man I know I, I said welcome to my world because I subscribe to um the Dutch networks even though I don't speak Dutch um I saw the video of you tr- training in the gym in Uganda with the kids and you were so happy there and, ah. and that was an amazing video interview and uh, I watch yeah. all that stuff because I, like I said, I, I, I'm a fan and, um, and that you look so happy there with the kids training. And that was an amazing yeah. video, by the way. Um, but yeah. um, I, I, when I saw you getting ready to go out to the ring, you're, you know, that time it's about five minutes or 10 minutes before you go out for your fight and we're in the locker yeah. room and we're doing the last couple of bursts on the pad and then our trainers yeah. massaging and getting us ready and, and I saw you, you know, with Lucian, you're about to go out, but you're still in the locker room, but you're about to do the walk to the fight. Yeah. And I had this vision of my, my, in my head and I shared it with Kendrick. Uh, the, the fighters, a fighter, a real fighter is such a spiritual being and it's such a spiritual thing to, to fight. And um, you reminded me of, uh, of the perfect Mustang racehorse getting ready to go out to the gates to do the race. <laughs> And your trainer, a big, powerful, well-trained Mustang, the, the primest Mustang. And your trainer's like brushing your, your, your mane, you have the brush. He's like, get you ready. And you're just like, this. Yeah. so, so like, like good. amazing. Yeah. So, um, that just would remind me, reminded me of like fighters like yourself are, 
are such a, a, a special breed and they need to be um, appreciated and, and respected always. Mm -hmm. It's a noble, Thank you very much. A noble profession that, that you mm -hmm. were a multiple world champion in. So I just want to share yeah. that and give it to my man. Wow. Kendrick. Wow, that's really nice of you, Xavier. That's really nice. That's really nice, crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, indeed. Ilanka, um, we talked about people or a person, Lucian, that it was influential in terms of you developing in the way that you have and had and with the kickboxing and life as a whole. Is there a, a person or are there a couple of people that molded you and, and helped you to have that drive that you have, that you've applied not only towards being a champion, but just in pushing forward through the hard times and just being a better yeah. person? Yeah, the first one is my grandmother. She recently okay. passed away. I'm sorry to hear, I that. Have... hear that. Sorry to hear that. No, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You No, but she was really spurred. She was really. Uh, she was really uh, one of the persons that really stood by me. She okay. was the one that told me whatever, 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 whatever I do, I should never give up, and I should okay. make up my own mind. And yeah. um, because of her, I started with the fighting because. Um, <sighs> Everybody, when I, when, I, when I told my parents and my friends and my family that I was going to do Thai boxing mm -hmm. and I was going to be a champion, everybody said, Shh, you should stay quiet. Everybody was going to think that you're crazy and uh, you're not going to be a champion. You know how people are. They know you like a, somebody who likes to laugh a lot, do things, but not with spite, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I proved them wrong. And Absolutely. she said, you really should do what your heart and your mind tells you to do. And that's what I did. It's my grandmother is the first. And okay. every fight that I had all over the whole world where I fought, I called her the day of the weight check. Grandma, tomorrow I'm going to fight. And after mm. the fight, I'm, I called her back and told her I won the fight. So mm. she's the one. Yeah. Uh, the, second one um, the second one is my best friend. That's Eric. And okay. um, he, he was the balance in my life. Okay. Because um, he is very calm. He's a calm person. And, um, yeah. you know, when you're on top and uh, everybody has an opinion and people talk a lot. And he was the one who was, he was, who was talking to people. I didn't talk to people with negative things. Sure. sure. I, I, I stay away from negative people because, you know, I don't have a, a big, long, how do you call it? Uh, to when you light up a fire and then it explodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 short yeah, fuse. fuse. Yeah, short I got fuse. a short. I don't got a fuse, so it's better. Oh, to no fuse. To the I don't have a fuse. <laughs> like so it's yeah, it's Eric's part. So Eric did his job in Good being job, one Eric. of my best friends. Yeah, Eric. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Eric. And then you had Lucian on the other ear talking to mm -hmm. you. Should let things go, stay focused. Um, mm -hmm. You said we're gonna be. You wanted to be a champion. Now you gotta stay. You need to stay one to become one. is not. It's not a problem. But to stay one, that's the work. And right. um, and I I wanted to put in the work. And uh, we trained that. That's where where we train three times a day, and uh, working mm -hmm. hard every day. Shopping technique. Um, it's it's you know that's what people said when I when I was fighting and Lucian uh next, sitting next to Lucian is like he was holding a joystick in his hand and playing a live video game. That's what the, that's the connection, the magical bond that I had with Lucian. Wow. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And one thing was also really important for me were my sparring partners such as Robert uh, Westmas and uh, Walter, uh, a, a guy, those guys what I was sparring with daily. And, um, you know, our fighting family is, our, our fighters club was a family. So yeah. we're still connected. We're still connected. Absolutely. So Absolutely. to say the most you already know now. So that were the most yeah. important people in my life. Yeah. A small, yeah, well, small winning team. Absolutely. Yeah. Lucian helped uh, <clears throat> recently. Lucian helped Tiffany Van Sos beat Anissa Mexican. Yeah. And that was amazing. Yeah. That, yeah. That was I spoke to her before the fight and after the fight with that Tiffany. Was, wow. That was impressive. Yeah. And yeah, but Tiffany thought she uh, could do a better job and that she didn't come into her fight like she wa really wanted to do because she had another combination in her mind that she really wanted to, to use and she didn't create the opportunity to use the technique or she didn't get the opportunity to, to use the technique. So, but I think um, what Lucian does with other fighters because we had a principle, Lucian has a, a goal or dream that he wants to have uh, 50 world champions that he made. 
Mm-hmm. Don't come over here. Okay. Now he has only 50, only 50. And uh, he ha- now he has 49. And nice. From fighters, yeah, he has only one to go. Okay. And um, all the world title, the, world, the, the first 40 uh, world champions were the champions, um, the people who came into the gym without any experience and he made them a champion or a multiple world champ. I'm still the only female in that division. So yeah. if I see what he does with Tiffany, it is hard to work with other people's fighters. Yeah. But I think that he and Tiffany has, has have a, a good chemistry. Yeah. And and Tiffany is eager to to learn and uh, she listens very good. She puts in the work and I, I, I really love that. I love to see that also. So uh, the next time when she has to fight and she's in the Netherlands, we're going to work together. Mm-hmm. She already knows. Yeah. That sounds real That's good. Wow. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ilanka, how can people get a hold of you the, to, to give you support um, of, of the, the Ilanka Elma Foundation? If they want to support just different things that you're doing, are you on all social media? How can they get a hold of you? Well, the best thing is yeah, to DM me and then, okay. yeah, they can, they can DM me and uh, um, send me a message. Um, normally it goes to this, this is my personal account. So it will go, to, it will come directly to me. Okay. Um, and some, if it goes to the foundation's Instagram, then it will be my assistant or the okay. secretary that's uh, working, but they can get a hold of me. It's okay. Important. Now, what about like, so what about supporting you? If not, not, not so much necessarily directly reaching out to you, but if they want to, do you have like a, a Facebook page that they can follow? Similar. Do you have an IG that they can follow? Just all that good stuff, the social media thing that you said you're too lazy for? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm lazy for the social media thing. I'm, I'm kind of serious with that thing. <laughs> better believe her. I'm kind of serious with being lazy. <laughs> better believe her, Kendrick. She yes, meant it. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay, ma'am. I, have, okay. I only have one lazy thing in my life. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> Facebook is my name, Ilonka Elmont, uh, okay. the killer queen on Facebook and on Instagram, okay. the same. Okay. So easy. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and they can send me a, a message directly, get a hold of me, and uh, then you make an appointment. Mm. Okay. Ilonka, I'm, I'm, uh, easy. Ilonka, I'm gonna try with this with my new platform, with this YouTube channel I'm creating and working on with Kendrick every day and some other projects I have in the works. I hope mm-hmm. that I can earn some money enough to maybe arrange a seminar for you out here in the States, only so I can train with you. But I gotta, I gotta go make the money first so I can fly you out here. I'll, I'll make a seminar so everyone can do it, but it's more for me because I want to learn. I think you're a phenomenal athlete. Then I will, phenomenal student. I will pick you. What's that? Then I will pick you. Yes. Okay. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Thank no, you. No, no, listen up. Savior, I'm, 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 not, I'm not joking. If, um, if you want to arrange a seminar, definitely, I would love to do it. And uh, I have a lot of uh, techniques to, to uh, show you guys and to, to, to teach you guys. And I guess maybe, um, I'm not sure, maybe next year, because now due to Corona, everything is uh, put on hold. But my intentions are to come to the States next year. So okay. maybe you can uh, make Flabbering. arrangements then. Yes. Yeah, and then never you can set up a seminar. seminar. I've never yeah. planned a seminar before. I almost did one time with Josh Johnson and then COVID hit because yeah. I've, I've, I've trained with yeah. him at his gym before, um, but I would totally do it for the first time just so I could uh, train with you because you are, uh, mm-hmm. you're, I'm, you're one, I'm a fan. You're a phenomenal martial artist. Thank you. Thank you. And, and if, I'm, if I'm near, I will come and train with you either way, awesome. with or without a seminar. <laughs> wow. All right, Javi, you heard that, right? Huh? Oh man, yeah, we got it on video. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's proof. <laughs> remember, I remember you said, oh, you remember? Look. <laughs> just kidding, just that's kidding. That's why we need a manager. That's why we yeah. need managers, man. <laughs> I, I, know I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I got you. Oh. Il- Ilanka, what um yeah. what words of wisdom? What 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 would you like to share with someone? You know, it, it could be, I mean, it's just people, it's people out here hurting, just going through things that need to hear a word of encouragement. You know, I mean, we all can use one. So what words of wisdom do you have that you that you share with us, with us and the people that are watching this interview? I would say if you're passionate about something, do it. Don't let nobody 
um, bring your on other other uh, on on other thoughts. Do what you please. Do it. That's the only thing. Sounds good. Yeah. Good. Just a quick, yeah. qu quick side note. Thank you for sharing what you did. Just as a whole, everything that you shared, but definitely thank you for sharing with us You're the welcome, people Kenneth. that were influ influential in your life, your grandmother and, and Eric. We appreciate that. Yes, those special things, especially. <laughs> yes, we do. Good Thanks. job, Eric mm -hmm. and grandmother too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Thank, thank you for your Kendrick. time thank today. You so Welcome. Thank you for all your time. We, we appreciate it. And I hope to talk to you again sometime in the future soon. Yeah, definitely. I would love to. I look forward been, to and having you talking to you guys again. Me too. Yes, ma'am. Been a have pleasure. With your son. Yeah, and the dogs. And the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. I see you guys. We appreciate it. Take care. Thank you so much.